It's about that time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of City Views, brought to you by our most wonderful sponsor, Toth Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street. Better protection, better value. Today, we are so glad to bring to you our interview with Superintendent of Torrington Schools, the one and only Susan Lebomsky. And she's got a lot of good things to share with us, I'm sure, since our last interview. So we're looking forward to this interview. So without further ado, good afternoon, Sue. Good afternoon, Jacques. It's my <laughs> pleasure to be here. It's always wonderful to be with you. So thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for bearing with us. We had a little technical uh, issue this morning, uh, which prompted us to have our interview today outside in the elements. <laughs> <laughs> You're a brave soul. Well, yeah. Hey, some things you just got to do. So we couldn't oh. pass up the opportunity because we know how busy your schedule is to uh, have you speak to our viewing audience about the uh, wonderful things that are happening with the Torrington School District. So um, I think the best places to begin is to congratulate you uh, for the passing of the referendum, which will allow uh, the high school to be built. And um, <laughs> yes, we are so, so excited. Just well, over the moon. Really. It's one big step for Torrington and two big steps for the students that are going to be uh, enhanced uh, by this development. So talk to us a little bit about uh, your plans going forward and how you're going to implement uh, the building of the new school. So it is just so exciting, Jacques. I, first of all, I just want to thank this community. I, I'm so honored to be the superintendent of the district in this community. Just the overwhelming support we had um, for the vote for, as you say, the middle school, high school, and our plan moving forward for grades 7 through 12. And we are excited for the opportunities for our students. I think that every you know, there's a rhythm to everything, right? You're a music guy. So I think that, you know, for Torrington, their time is now. They're, this tipping point, this, um, this ebb and flow, I think we're on a high note. Uh, definitely, this is a game changer. And I think that it really will help us revive the community and um, have our students receive what they really need, which will be great. Now, uh, people have been asking uh, questions about how um, it's going to work with having the middle school students in the same building as the high school students. Sure. Um, now, personally, I don't see that as too big of a problem. But for those viewers who do see or are a little anxious about that, can you uh, calm their fears a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Actually, in most of our surrounding towns, they have a 7 through 12, if not a 6 through 12, or even a 5 through 12 model. So it's been done in most of the regional districts around us, and it's been a real positive. For us, it will really benefit our 7th and 8th grade students. They will be in a separate area. It will be sectioned off from the 9th through 12th students. So that safety factor, those concerns really, um, you don't have to worry, parents, students. Um, separate entrance, separate administration, those kinds of things. But the benefits will be our seventh and eighth grade students will be able to use the labs in the schools that really are the pathways. They will start their exploration at a very young age. Most of us don't know what we want to be when we grow up, right? So you need to go through that process early so that you can really explore. Do I want to go into technology or manufacturing or STEM, which is the science, technology, engineering, and math? Or do I really want to go into the arts, um, performing arts, applied arts? Do you want to go into education or maybe public service, medical, health? There's a variety of different areas. And what we did was we created pathways based on student input and what we needed in our local town. Right here in Torrington, our local businesses gave us input in terms of the skills our students needed so that they could be gainfully employed and hopefully become productive citizens within our community. So if we start with seventh and eighth grade, they can really 
start taking the courses toward what they're interested in. By the time they get to high school, they can take accelerated classes. They can take college classes before they even graduate. They can start on maybe a certification for the tech um, jobs, careers that they want to get involved in so that they are really ready to hit the ground running once they graduate. So it's really a continuum that's seven through 12. That's a, that's a pretty good model uh, to, to build from. Um, how, how is it going to be implemented uh, in terms of some of the, the concepts, educational concepts, uh, in, in terms of uh, classroom size, classroom, how they're put together um, to increase um, students' ability uh, and motivation to learn. I know that uh, you guys are really trying to uh, come up with innovate, innovative ways to, uh, to reach kids where they are and to open up their minds to the infinite possibilities uh, that, that are available, which sometimes can be clouded by some of these social issues that we're dealing with. Um, what's your strategy going forward in making sure that those plans for innovation are incorporated into the curriculum. So we have a, a variety of different issues in those questions. Those are heavy duty questions, Jacques. So we wanna make sure that we have hands-on, that we have engaged learners. That's very, very important. So obviously the labs, the pathways, help students explore, help them have that project-based learning time. But we want to make sure that our students are also engaged in their core classes that right in the English, in math, in social studies, in science. So we really, so Veterans Day was a really good example. So even though um, you wouldn't necessarily think about math as a, oh, let's delve into, or how can you possibly connect that to Veterans Day, right? They really did a very relevant lesson on a mathematician that because of his calculations and because of the way he um, helped the um, army with strategies, they really were able to win some of these battles. And you wouldn't even think that. But in every single discipline, math or social studies, obviously history is easy connection with Veterans Day. Um, English is an easy connection um, in terms of what students read and how they pulled things apart. And then the scientists, certainly in terms of what we used in terms of warfare and how we use some of those strategies. So it was really great that they were able to pull things together as well as honor folks in our community and really talk about what a veteran really means. What that comes down to and why I'm bringing that up, Shock, is we want what we're teaching to be relevant and timely. And our students, as you're saying, you know, you've got a lot of social unrest, you've got a lot of issues that are going on, a lot of things that kids are trying to deal with and make sense of in the world. So those, especially at the high school level, you want our students having those very relevant conversations in our classrooms and, and bringing those things out. So the students do become critical thinkers. They for, are forming their own opinions because they're gonna be our leaders. They're, they're going to be our citizens. And hopefully what we're providing them in their core classes is a way to think and to analyze and to problem solve so that we do have a better world for our future. So you've got both of those things, hands-on engagement and relevancy in what they're learning. That's key. Now, we're obviously um, dealing with uh, some challenges in terms of uh, in-school learning versus remote learning. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, you just got kind of a, a boost from the state in terms of uh, the application or applying of uh, computers and laptops to uh, local students. Can you talk a little bit about that, Sue, and how that's going to help you reach your goals and increase your curriculum? Right. So for years and years, we kept saying we want to be a one-to-one -one district. We want every student to have a device. And it, that's been very difficult. 
to really make sure that we have that reality. Just because of financial, just as many towns had financial difficulties. This year, the state through and grants have really helped us provide one-on-one -on -one to all of our students. So that's a phenomenal leap in terms of our distance learning for our students. And even when we're not in this COVID kind of craziness, and we are not doing that remote learning, it will really help for our students to have computers so that they can access their learning at home as well. Right. It makes a, it's a game changer. Absolutely it is. Now, um, since um, the lockdown, Sue, um, have you gotten any information as to how it's affected uh, scores, test scores, uh, things of that nature? How is the learning curve being affected through the coronavirus? Sure. So it was difficult because we weren't able to do our standardized test in the spring because our students were home, obviously, March, April, May, when we would normally test. Uh, so what we do is we have a district-wide test. It's difficult because we were only able to test in the fall and the winter of last year. And then this year, we were testing in the fall again. And, and so it's not really a continuum. It's not like we were able to have those spring scores and then this falls. So we probably won't know till the end of this year. Um, certainly what we are doing is making sure that students have that foundation and that core. We don't want them missing any concepts. We want them to be able to move forward. Just remembering at the same time though, this is also happening in the whole world <laughs> and in the whole nation and in the whole state. So we're all operating from, okay, where are we at? Where do we need to be? And, and pushing ourselves forward. We also, I think, have made a lot of strides in terms of how we deliver our distance learning, because right now we're on uh, remote. Right now, 100% remote, we go back in person on Monday for K-5 and then hybrid 612 again. Um, and that just happened because of our health metrics in our particular town. But we really have gotten so much better at the delivery and making sure that our students are able to have these interactions like I'm having with you, right? We've learned to talk to people in a box um, and then interact with each other and, and really have that real time connection and interaction. And I think that's what students were really missing and craving. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's huge um, because it's it's kind of easy to get kind of um, uh, lost in the shuffle. Yeah, and um, you know, dealing with we were teenagers, so we know how it is. Sure. And sometimes you got to look out because someone could be going through something that could be affecting um, their their educational pursuits and. To, uh, to be aware of that, I think, uh, bodes well uh, for your administrative objectives. A lot of um, the athletes uh, in the area, you know, uh, they're missing um, possible scholarships, things of that nature. Um, and I know it's got to be very, very tough for you. Uh, but talk to our audience a little bit about um, how in the coming months, it will be possible to reinstitute the athletic programs in the Taunton High School curriculum. Sure, Jacques. Yeah, that is just heartbreaking um, because it it's not only about the health benefits and getting out there and, and doing team sports, but it is about the scholarships and our students' futures. Now, in the fall, we were able to play a modified schedule, all except for our football players. Um, so we are still hoping that we can squeeze in a season in between that it's kind of in between the the winter and the spring seasons the, you know fingers crossed from that like february to april ish time um and the ciac for right now and the governor are saying okay looking toward that second half of january uh, for possible start um, getting going again. So I think what we're doing as with everything else 
the, the metrics, the health metrics have been guiding us. The uh, Department of Health have been telling us um, the DPH, where we need to go with this. And, and we really, as important as all of that is, sports and scholarships and the future, we have to have everybody stay safe and healthy. Otherwise, you know, that's going to impact them much, much more than scholarships and, and playing a team sport during high school. You know, uh, it's kind of ironic, though, because one of the lessons that we learned in sports was that you have to deal with adversity. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right. That being a part of a team and sports, absolutely. You brush yourself off, you get up, right? You take the the losses as well as the wins and, and then you go from there. But you're absolutely correct. It, it is metaphor for life. So we, we hope that we are able to go forward. Well, Sue, the next thing I want to discuss with you is kind of a touchy issue. Sure. But uh, we're on the verge of um, a vaccine. Yeah. Um, and many people are very concerned about this. Um, now, as far as when I was in school, we took vaccines. <laughs> I mean, that there was um, not the uh, the big controversy about it. Um, but uh, I had a conversation with a friend of mine uh, who we went to school with, and we were talking about it, and. Uh, it was like, well, we came out okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. But how are you going to position yourself as a superintendent of schools when this issue comes up? Right. So this is very difficult, um, very controversial. So first of all, we have to wait to see what the legislature decides in the state of Connecticut. And so if they are going to mandate a COVID vaccine as well as the other vaccines, as you say, um, and then we'll have to go from there. Uh, we were just talking about this last night at one of our school improvement meetings with our board and one of the board members asked, so are we setting up a policy? Are we setting up a policy around students? Are we setting up a policy around staff? So we really do need to wait. We have to we're in the school business, we're not in the legal business. So we have to wait till that comes down from the state. Then we act accordingly. Um, even with the vaccines, as you know, some folks really, even before this, even pre-COVID, felt like for philosophically or religious reasons or what have you, they wanted their children to abstain from vaccines. We have been fortunate, if you want to put it that way, um, in Torrington because our percentage rate in terms of compliance with vaccines has been very high up to this point, 98, 99%. Um, that may change in terms of having pushback from families. Um, so I think we're gonna have to wait and see. I, I don't mean to pass the buck there, Jacques, but I, I really, I can't act until I get a directive from the state and then we would go from there. And then the whole staff issue and, and making that available or requiring it would would come from the state as well. Yeah, uh, I don't envy you in this position, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yes. It's been tough being a superintendent over the last few months. Yes, You're Talking about definitely. getting thrown into the fire. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, and you know, I, I'm with my colleagues and we're all saying the same thing. So safety in numbers, we're talking a lot, we're working collaboratively, and, and that helps. Well, Sue, I pretty much think that um, the uh, community is lucky to have you as a superintendent because oh. I know care. When people are in leadership positions, you mm -hmm. certainly hope that they do care. Yeah. And uh, you embody that and uh, your reputation precedes you. And uh, I think that uh, we're very fortunate to have you in that position. So thank you for all that you do for the residents and the students and the city of Torrington. And thank you so much for cooperating with us to take time out of your busy schedule to talk with us this afternoon. Sure, thank you so much. Great to see you again, Jacques. Thank you for all the well, accolades. I love being here. <laughs> you deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> and we hope to talk to you real soon. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Ladies and gentlemen, our superintendent of schools, Sue Labomsky.